Hi, welcome to this basic tutorial on how to unwrap uh, using Maya's uh, UVW mapping tools. Okay, so this tutorial is going to use this asset for a sub uh, which I'll make available for download uh, somewhere in the, uh, the uh, comment section of this tutorial. So what I have here is basically a sub uh, and um, it doesn't have any UVs existing on it so let's just check it out. Before I do that I'm just going to hide some various parts of the UI uh, or user interface so I'm going to scrap the time slider, range slider, command line and help line so we have a lot more real estate going on here. Alright so let's have a look at it. So what I'm going to do is open up the UV texture editor or through window <coughs> uh, UV texture editor just here which I open up the uh, window for this and I'm just going to select uh, the sub itself and its propeller at the end here as well so you can see here that the UVs for this object are absolute rubbish so we can't really do much with this at this stage um, what I will do is I will apply a checker pattern to this model first before we continue so we can actually get some visual feedback on the model of the current state of our UVs so just selecting the model, right clicking and assigning a new material. I'm going to assign a Lambert and I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the checker box here to import a render node and in particular I'm interested in the checker pattern render node and that will load in like so and if I switch on uh, the texture in the viewport here uh, I will be able to see it. Oh, that's, that's nasty. Uh, I'm going to also apply this checker pattern to the propeller here. It's going to right click. And this time I'm going to go assign existing material. And since I've only got two materials in the scene, and the first one being the default, the second one must be my checker pattern. Alright, so that's pretty horrible as well. Okay, so you can see it's pretty nasty. Um, we should be expecting a reasonable uh, checker pattern like what's on this portion uh, at the back here but it's not for the rest of this model whatsoever apart from a bit of nose which looks alright okay I'm just gonna turn off the grid don't want to look at it nice okay so what we're gonna do actually is just apply straight off the bat a UV projector now projectors are used to uh, help position the UVs uh, coordinates for each one of the vertices in the scene on a 2D uh, plane. They're kind of like taking a uh, snapshot with a camera in a particular direction and uh, we'll have a look at that now. So the tools we have available for doing UV projections are available uh, under the polygon menu. So we change to all more to the point we can also get it on the shelf the polygons, the last series of tools here um, are to do with UV texturing or UV unwrapping more to the point. So the first one here is our planar map. The next one along is our cylindrical map. This one is a spherical map. This one is actually an automatic unwrap which I'm not going to touch on today. And this one here is to open our UV texture editor. So we'll be looking at this one first and going through some of the points of it. Okay, so I'm just going to have a ring selected and I'm going to go ahead and select the planar UV uh, projection. And this didn't work. So in some cases uh, it seems that Maya 2012 was a bit buggy. But you can also go to create UVs and hit planar mapping from over here. Alright, so I have a projection been applied to my summary and this is very obvious it's uh, this whole section here okay if you didn't get this appearing like so essentially if you go to create UVs planar mapping and go select the uh, options box for this what you want to do is you want to focus on its projection direction so in my case it was already set to the x-axis but yours might be set to the y-axis or even the z-axis. So go ahead and choose the x-axis option and hit apply. 
and you should get the projection pairing like so. So right, I'm just going to hide this attribute editor here. Alright, so what is this? Like essentially what we're going to look at or focus at uh, on this is a few things uh, that are uh, to manipulate this projector. Uh, and essentially we have these controllers in various locations around the bo this uh, sort of box here. And this allows us to change the uh, aspect or dimensions of our projection itself. Also have this one here down at the bottom which is called the transform uh, toggle. We'll look at that in a second. But essentially if you just grab say the uh, the red scale box over here you can scale it down like so. And what you're trying to do, if I open up my UV texture editor and undo, you can see how initially the projection tries to fit the entire geometry of this um, uh, submarine within the uh, one to one UV texture uh, coordinate zone. So essentially what happens is even though your uh, checker box pattern here it looks nice and uh, uniform and square it actually appears completely stretched over here off your sub. It's because it's been uh, compressed to fit. So essentially what we need to do is and with manipulating the handle here in the end is we'll basically scale it the projection uh, in itself to a more of a square shape which in turn will make the checker pattern which appears in the boat a nice uniform square pattern. This basically means when you apply texture uh, and use text and use uh, circular objects or whatever you're going to get a very accurate representation of your 2D texture upon your 3D geometry. So the red handles will allow us to scale it this way, the green handles will allow us to scale it in this direction and the blue ones will allow us to change the overall uh, density of the checker pattern on our model. Okay, so that's the basics of that one. The red handle down the bottom here, so this one we call the transform toggle, if you select that it will toggle the gizmo which you can see in the center this allows you to select one of the three axes for moving or for scaling for example or if you select the blue circle that you can see here around the outside of the gizmo it will make available the rotation uh, attributes for this particular gizmo what I'm going to do is just going to move this out in front of our model so we can have a bit of a look at it so there we go We've got scale will do various things and of course the rotate will do various things like so. What we're going to do is actually look at the checker pattern on the boat. Now from the left or the side view you can see our checker pattern is looking very nice. No problem whatsoever. We go to perspective and we start to roll across the model. You can see how it stretches significantly across the top of the boat and then we get around the other side we can see how it's getting back to a nice uniform basis. Around the front you get stretching of the uh, the checker pattern as well and if we go have a look at the prop we're going to see a significant mess. It doesn't make any sense. Alright so basically the it doesn't matter what you do okay now so I've lost my projection handle you could go control Z to undo, undo it or alternatively to get your projection uh, gizmo back up you can go to the channel box. Hmm. Let's try again. And I'll just go into object mode by pressing F8. And in your inputs down here, for the history, you can see the planar projection like so. So if you just click on that, you'll get your projection appearing again. So don't worry about it if it disappears. You might actually get in the habit of reapplying this. Um, projection every time you lose it but in fact you do not have to do that just go check out the inputs for your uh, shape in your channel box and you'll be able to access this planar projection again so you can do a lot of things here we've got projection width and height we can actually chuck in an absolute value in here and this will guarantee a very square uh, checker pattern on our boat but it's quite obvious that it's not going to work for this particular shaped boat so you can do a few things and just check out what happens when you rotate. 
So basically, I'll switch on the plane. You can see whatever direction you pointed at. So for example, if I rotate it again to face from a different direction, if I look at through its direction as pointing, you can see that the projection is based on this idea of a sort of a uh, camera, I suppose. It's a good way of looking at it. But this isn't going to cut it. This projection handle. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about this prop at the moment. I'm just going to look at the actual main body of the sub. So I'm going to consider another projection handle. Oops, that's what I wanted. And basically, if you look at this model, all in all, it's the shape of a cylinder, more or less. So we can take advantage of another projection, which is the cylindrical projection here. So I'm going to click on that, and it doesn't work for me in 2012. So I'm going to go to Create UVs instead and select it for here, cylindrical mapping. All right. So what it does is it sets up a projection. Uh, and basically it fits it based on uh, its initial creation parameters and it's absolutely not correct whatsoever so what you have to sort of be aware of is that our submarine is lined up on our z-axis but currently our projection is lined up on our y-axis so we essentially need to rotate this through so we can line it up on the correct axis which is the z-axis in this case so you could do this a couple of ways you could select the uh, transform toggle to enter into the rotate mode and then rotate it into your position or alternatively you could just plug in an absolute value over here I'm just going to do negative 90 since that was the way I wanted to rotate it and your projection will line up as expected so let's have a look at it now. So the projection is on board and all in all <coughs> excuse me um, it's looking quite nice. Now if we look at the model itself what happens is you can see the checkered pattern around the side is quite nice but as we swing around to the top of our model it gets compressed. So it's not really working so well and around the bottom it gets stretched. So what's going on here? So what we need to do, we need to consider the origin of our projection. And before we do that, I'm just going to scale the entire projection handle down by grabbing the middle helper here. So we have it sort of containing the, the ship itself. And I'm going to switch to, um, I'm switch off the texture uh, visualization in the viewport so I can have a look at what's going on. So we've got a line in the z-axis. So yes, the projection's in the z-axis, the boat's in the z-axis. What's going on? What's going on essentially is that my axis of the boat is about here, but the axis of my projection is here. So I have this, uh, say, offset going on here, and in reality what I want to do is I want to uh, translate this projection down so it matches the axis of the boat. What it's done in reality is positioned it based on the overall um, Oops. Uh, overall average of all the vertices or the mesh itself. So this effectively is the center um, of the average. So that's basically how it's may have set it up. But obviously visually we know where everything is. So we have to take our own interpretation and reposition this in the center. So I'm going to turn on the visual feedback by switching on the uh, texture interview port. And I'm going to go around and select the uh, transform toggle so I can access and manipulate the Z axis of the transform. So I'm going to move it down until I get into the basic perceived center of the boat or the center line of the boat. And as you do so, you'll find that your uh, checker pattern basically becomes more and more uh, square. So you can use the front of the boat here to get a better idea of where you've positioned it. But essentially, that's it. So we have a really nice checker pattern on here and if we roll into the UV texture editor over here we're going to look at what we've got. Alright so we have all the UVs laid out like so. There are some issues like here something's wrong and we have this staggering of our UVs like so which is not right either. 
of course this part of the boat here is not good too. So this time I'm going to speak about seams. So when you unwrap something in a UV editor, it doesn't matter what application you do use, it's going to have to create a seam. So it's similar to how you would have to, uh, if you had a uh, cardboard tube, you would have to cut the tube along its uh, uh, its main axis in order for you to roll it out, like so. So I'm just going to turn on the texture seam visualization in uh, the UV editor, which is this one here. So if I switch that and toggle it on, you will see that the seams are, are basically indicated with this thicker uh, line. So if I go back to my sub, I can also see the feedback here as well. So this corresponds to that. So this is the same thing. So what can I do to, say, fix up this staggered appearance here? Okay, so I'm going to go to, to my transform, uh, toggle, on, toggle back to the actual parameters of the manipulator itself, and you can see here I have a red sort of uh, arc going through the projection handle itself. It's actually is something I can grab and manipulate. I can rotate where the seam is going to appear. So I wanted to go right down the center of the boat, so essentially I just move it around until I get the result I want. And you can visually confirm it in your UV editor. So whatever you do with the UV texture editor and projections, you're going to get seams. But essentially the seam here I'm hiding on the bottom of my boat. And uh, when we get into painting textures we'll talk about um, some of the issues you might face when you're trying to match uh, a color or texture from one side to the other. Alright, so that's uh, the main body of the boat with a reasonable projection going on. I think I can live with this. So what I'm going to do is just select that here and I'm going to proceed to map other areas of the boat. Okay, so what we're going to look at now is the conning tower of the boat. Primarily I'm going to look at the flat surface on the top here, um, which is this section just here and I'm going to decide what kind of projection handle will be appropriate for that. So this time around though what I'm going to do is actually uh, do a UV map on a particular selection. Currently we've had the whole boat selected while well, we've basically hit these projections up here or projections through here, same thing. Uh, but now we're going to look at app selections uh, instead of the entire object itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top of the boat. So I'm going to go to F11, which will get us into the face mode. And I'm going to select the top of the boat, like so. Um, I have everything I want selected, except I have a extra selection here. And I'm going to control and then deselect this part. So I'm just left with the top of the boat. I'm going to go to my Create UVs. I'm going to go to Planar Map. And before I throw it down, I'm going to go to the Options. I'm going to decide what projection direction is the best for this. Now currently it's set to the x-axis but if I look at my flat surface here it's actually more aligned not with the x which would be in this direction uh, not with the z but with the oops, with the y-axis so essentially we need to go and set up for a y-axis projection so let's do that and hit apply and you can see your projection here, which is nice. Let's close this and minimize this. And what we've got here is our projection width and height over here is something that is basically uh, 2 to 1. And I'm going to change this so it's 1 for 1. So I might just put in the value 20 or 10, doesn't matter, as long as it's 1 for 1. And you'll see how our checker pattern is looking really, really nice here. Just going to scale that up a little bit so the pattern's a bit bigger. So we can effectively say that this has been now completed. Let's just go back to my UV texture editor. And what we have here is our UVs appearing like so. Now, normally in the workflow, you would move this over to the right or out of the way. So when you deselect it, it now becomes an object on its own over here, while your boat is over here. If for some instance or reason you had just clicked out and you ended up with something like this, okay, so it's going to be hard to select uh, the section we just created. Now, 
you could go into your UV mode, which would be F12 on the keyboard, and you could start picking off the UVs like so. You can actually see how this is going to be quite laborious, and you might accidentally select the wrong UVs or not enough UVs. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. You could do a uh, grow selection. So if I go, uh, let's go T. So talk about grow selection, you would hold down the shift and use one of the arrow keys. This will equal grow selection. Or I can use a shift and that will equal shrink selection. So how does this work in practice? Okay, so if I go and select one of the UVs, okay, it's not a UV, just maybe a group up here, and I go and grow the selection, you can see how now I can select and move this UV set like so. So I'd move it out here, out of the way. Alternatively, I could just select one of the UVs here I'm interested in, and go to select, and select shell, which will do the same thing. So select shell will select the shell, and this is important terminology. So essentially this is a shell. So it's part of uh, a section that is of, the, is of the whole model. So for instance a shell has two halves, a top half and a bottom half, and they are, can be separated in the UV editor like so. So we're going to talk about uh, these shells, sometimes they're called f islands, uh, there's lots of different names for them. But this uh, is a unique set of UVs, and you can treat it as that. So we're just going to call it a shell to keep in the terminology of Maya. All right, so we've got that done, and we've got part of the boat done. So let's move on to another part of the boat we might be interested in here. Okay, so I'm going to look at the conning tower, which is the tower section of the boat. So I'm just going to go to F11 mode, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the entire top of the boat, like so. I'm just going to grow my selection, because grow selection also works in the polygon mode. To what basically is this kind of selection here. And I'm going only as far as when the tower actually meets the top half of the boat. Because uh, mostly this shape up here is a cylinder, but when it gets to a certain point it becomes a flat plane. So my determination for how far I grow it is based on this kind of relationship. So I'm happy with that. Now, if I look at my selection, I have the top of the boat selected as well. And I don't want that. However, with the UV texture editor open, I can see my new selection over here and my old selection over here. But what I can do, though, is hold down control and I can drag out in my UV editor and deselect that portion of the mesh I'm not interested in, leaving me with the section I wish to map. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do another projection map for this part of the tower. So to do this, I'm going to treat it as a cylinder. So I'm going to go up to create UVs, and I'm going to go cylindrical mapping. This time my cylindrical map has worked out quite nicely for me in its positioning, and this is going to be alright uh, for most cases. Now, it's okay. Uh, you can see around the front of the boat it's stretched, around the sides of the boat it's compressed and around the back it's stretched again. Uh, the important thing is my seam is running down the boat correctly. Uh, but I think I'm going to go off this and I'm going to talk about another tool to help us make this a better uh, unwrap of this particular object. So what I'm going to do before I click off this projection here, I'm going to move off to the left this new set of UVs, so I have the opportunity to work on it uh, like so. Alright, so I'm going to get F12 into UV mode, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the UVs down to the very center of this. Then I'm going to go to the polygons, and I'm going to select the option called Unfold, and go to the options box for this. Unfold is kind of a cool little tool actually, this is really nice. So you can see in my 3D viewport, I have uh, my UV selected and have a correspond to my UVs over here. Okay, so this is where the unfold is going to take place from. Right, let's go back and switch on that. So what I'm going to do is a few options for it. I'm going to pin UVs, so I want to keep these UVs in their position. 
I'm going to pin them as selected rather than the unselected and I'm going to change the unfold constraint so basically I want it to unfold uh, on the horizontal so I want it to unfold in this direction I would consider the vertical to be this direction now I could be wrong so let's just try it out on the horizontal and when you hit apply you'll see how Maya has basically stretched it out like so and has made a very very nice pattern indeed now unfortunately what it's done is it's basically distorted where it joins up at the seam so this is going to cause problems later on so I'm going to undo this and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to grab the UVs at this end UVs at this end and hit apply one more time and it should basically meet up a lot better around the rear of the boat still a bit stretched but we can still grab our UVs and using the scale tool or uh, R and just scale it out to get the appropriate look we're going for so this should be a very nice unwrap for us generally speaking uh, but the more time you spend on this the better the quality of texture is going to be so I'm just going to shrink that down a bit to start matching the checker pattern up with the size of the checker pattern on the boat uh, this is what you call texture density and this is important when you're talking about coverage so how much of a texture you're dedicating to certain sections of our uh, boat so at the moment the top of the boat the conning tower here is occupying a significant section of real estate as compared to the rest of the boat so it might be a good idea we'll just go in and we'll scale this so that our checker pattern is getting close to what it should be so that's a much better uh, representation of texture density across the whole boat okay so continuing on with this UV unwrap I'm going to consider other areas of the boat that I do not like whatsoever that would be the front of the boat where it distorts or gets pinched into a certain point and where a pinch occurs you get some pretty awful distortion and if you look at your UVs you can see some indication of this occurring but I think at the rear of the boat you can really see it uh, going crazy so what we're going to do is we're going to map that out on its own right so I'm going to go to F11 to go into polygonal selection mode and I'm going to grab the entire front of the boat like so and this time we're going to consider another uh, projection modifier or projection tool which would be the spherical map here so if you select that you'll get a projection coming up but in my case I still have to go to okay I'm stuck in animation mode so let's go to polygons go create UVs and do a spherical map and you'll get our spherical map projection like so now there is our representation and it's kind of worked but hasn't worked so we need to consider the offset uh, going on with Maya and his consideration so Maya has positioned it uh, essentially um, uh, between or in the overall average of its uh, the vertices so essentially it's positioned it in the middle here now we know when we look at it that our sphere would continue like so so we need to move our spherical projection so it's more in the center of our half hemisphere or basically in the origin of a half hemisphere or a hemisphere sorry half hemisphere would be a quarter but anyway so then you need to just go grab your uh, or toggle on your transform uh, node here or gizmo and then we're going to move it in to the center line of our object so we'll just pull that in like so I'll turn on or toggle on my texture and I'll go and select the and toggle back to my projection parameters and basically roll that out like so and might scale it up a bit so I can see it a bit better now it's not a hundred percent but I'm just going to move it a section there we go so it's snapped on top a little bit better um, but overall the projection is much nicer than it was before so I'll toggle back and what I might do is just unroll it a bit alright so just playing with the parameters here I'm going to try and succeed and get in our result so this is almost what I want but 
it seems that it's not quite correct, but for the majority of it, it's going to be a quite alright, except where it joins at the top. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm going to leave it as such and uh, see how we go from there. So that should be right for the moment. So I'm going to move this out over here and I'm going to look at the rear of the boat where the other problem was occurring and see what we're going to do here. Okay, so I'm going to go to FA mode. Now, essentially this is hidden inside my mesh here, so I need to just operate on this part here. So if I hit Shift I on the keyboard, I will be able to isolate my current selection. So Shift I will open up my isolation options, and I can see how what the where the problems occurring at the rear of the boat. So I'm going to go into polygon selection mode, and I'm just going to go ahead and select the rear of the boat, which is easy enough. You just select it like that, such, and then deselect the selection you're not interested in. Now again, this is an appropriate time to use a planar map. So I'm going to go up to create UVs and go planar map. This time, go into my options box, and this time I'm going to set up to go from the z-axis, and it's beautiful, nice. So I'll pull that off to one side and we pretty much have mapped the boat out. Now it's going to get these UVs, so I'm going to go into UV mode, F12, and select this, and I'm going to start scaling this to try and match up the UVs as good as possible, and swing around to the front of the boat, and repeat this process as well. So actually, very happy with the front, especially the top, it's worked nicely around the sides. But oh, this is not so good. But we'll uh, leave it at the moment. All right. So back into F8 mode, into the object mode. If you deselect your mesh completely or all meshes completely, if you hit Shift I on the keyboard again, you will reveal our propeller. So we're going to look at the propeller now. So I'm going to Shift I this one as well to isolate it. Press F on the keyboard. So we're going to look at this little object here. So this is the propeller. It's pretty awesome. Now the propeller is made up of individual blades and essentially all the blades are the same. Now it would be quite simple for us just to do a planar map on this and you'll get the UVs like so. Um, which is fine. But there's another thing we can do. Since each one of the blades is the same, we can essentially just map one of the blades and then recreate our mesh. So how does this work? Well, like so. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to actually shift I out of here. I'm just going to hide this object instead, so control H. And I'm going to duplicate this here and move it off a bit and I'm going to hide this also so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete um, all of the mesh except one blade so I'll go into F11 mode and just start deleting away so just start selecting out, deleting Deleting, deleting, deleting. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to take a half or uh, just a section of this uh, mesh. And I made a copy just in case I completely screw it up. <laughs> so I can always come back to it and. Just go ahead and delete. Okay. Delete. Delete. And just finish this off. Delete. Okay. So what I'm left with is one of the blades. So it was ten blades in total. But now I can just go ahead and happily map the entire blade just as it is. And I'll do a little trick after we finish mapping it, which would make this uh, pretty self-explanatory to why I did it like this. 
Alright, so I'm just going to uh, start with uh, doing a bit of planar mapping on this particular blade. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to F11 mode and I'm going to try and select the blades itself. Okay, now I've probably got all this geometry in the back I don't want. So I just need to deselect that. Okay, and I will just go shrink select selection by going shift left arrow, which will shrink it slightly. And I'll just need to add to my selection just quickly here to complete the blade like so. So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to try to orient my camera so it's pretty much flat on with the object like so. I'm going to go up to my create UVs, planar mapping options. And this time I'm going to choose the camera projection from option and hit OK. And just modify it to so square. And essentially what it does is it just takes a photo from the direction of the camera, which is what you want. So just move this off to one side, like so. It's nice. So I'm going to rotate around and I'm going to select the entire blade now bar the uh, propeller shaft itself. There we go. And because I have the selection separated, I can deselect the side I mapped, leaving me with the side I want to map. And I'll, I'll rotate my camera around so I can have a good look at it from this direction, and then I'll apply the edit, you uh, create UVs, plan I'm at one more time. Just change it around, and then I'll end up with a the other side of the propeller done like so. Nice. So now I'm just left with this section of the propeller, which is the, the end of the propeller shaft. Now I'm just interested in, so far, the cylindrical part of it only. So I'm just going to go like this. Um, actually it's probably okay like this, because what I'll do is I will map this as an entire object, but I'll leave the blades separate. So I got my blade sort of done like so, and that's great. So now I'm going to go to F8 mode and I'm going to select this object and I'm going to go and duplicate it. So edit, duplicate special, options box. So I'm going to check my options here, make that scale 1. And I'm going to set up for an instance, well copy doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to rotate it, I need to create 9 copies. And I'm going to rotate it in the uh, Z axis. Okay. And so we have a 360 degree rotation to us. Uh, divided by 10 gives us 36 degrees. And essentially we're just doing nine copies because we already have one copy. We hit apply and you'll get this result like so which is nice. So basically I'm going to select the, just check see if it's okay. Yeah. I'm going to grab it all like so and I'm going to go to mesh, combine, combines it all. I'm going to go delete all by type, history. I'm going to then modify and center my pivot which would bring it back to the center of my object again. So if I rotate it, it will be looking nice. And this has not been welded together. Uh, I've got my, one of my vertices here, you can see how you can break it apart, the model. So I need to select the entire mesh and then I'm going to go up to my mesh, edit mesh, and I'm going to look for merge and hit that. So once that's been hit, uh, my mesh won't collapse or fall apart anymore. All right. So, essentially what have we got? We have the blades pairing as so, so I go to F12, move this over here. If I was just to select one of the UVs here, and then go poly, uh, select shell, and move it out of the way, what you'll find is that you have laid out on top of each other the 10 blades. So, essentially if you leave it like so, you can paint detail on the blade and it will appear on all 10 blades at the same time. Okay, if you didn't want this, or you wanted one of the blades to have some unique detail, you could just get the UVs for this particular blade, 
and move it off to a lo unique location and then you could paint unique detail to that particular blade but I'm leaving them all on like so uh, because this is going to make it nice and easy for me to paint detail on the blade in itself so I'm going to however map what's left uh, by itself so I'm going to go F11 and I'm going to chuck on a uh, cylindrical map and I want to rotate it around like so so let's get a channel box and just chuck in 90 and we've mapped it so I'll move this okay I might just rotate it ever slow slightly Be nice, just getting the seam where I would like it. Move this up out of the way, and I'm just going to grab the back end of it here. So I'm just going to go F11 again, select that section, and I'm going to deselect the part that was also selected here. So just control unselect it, it's done. So this is a planar map in my view. Check to see if I got the selection how I expect. So edit UVs, gonna, sorry, create UVs, planar map. This time I'll be back to doing a Z axis projection. And you got your projection, which is nice. Move this over here. And I'm going to consider the front here as well. So I'm going to grab this, grab that section, and I'll chuck on a uh, create UV spherical map, like so. I'll offset its center be significant. Uh, now this is a little bit different. This is interesting. So uh, where do I position my center? Okay, so I'm just going to scale this up and my projection is facing the wrong way. So I rotate it around through 180 degrees. Now what you s basically want to do is line up a couple of things here. So the thing that you look for I'll go to the green. You can see my general arc here. What you want to do is you want to match the arc here. So that's the notion of it. So if I go around and I look at it from the top here, you can see how there's another arc I need to match up as well. But this time it's out. So my red arc is quite almost a full um, hemisphere, but my actual surface is only a portion of that. So I kind of need to adjust out this section here to make this work properly. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So it's to match up that arc. Okay, that's kind of nice. So I'm just going to okay, just adjust a little bit more. And that should be quite alright. So leave it like so. UV texture editor. And scale a little bit in here as well but that's looking kind of nice so essentially what I'm left to do now is to make all my UVs just the same density so the blades and the prop area there looks good the back looks good but this part here the density is all wrong so I'm just going to go to F12 and I'm just going to scale that a smaller as to basically make it the same density. So the density is kind of important when it comes to painting textures. So I'm going to position it like so. Alright, so that's basically the prop done. So now I'm going to just go to F12 mode. I'm just going to position this a little bit so it's easy for me to understand uh, what each section is. I could easily just put this in here to save texture space and it's uh, usually an idea you want to keep in your mind all the time and just move this down like so and there we go so I'm just going to move this up here for the moment because now I'm going to go back and I'm just going to go sh display all show all surfaces uh, I'm going to delete the other prop shaft since I didn't need it and I'm going to select this and the boat and the 
Oh, my cameras have become revealed. Let's just hide my cameras there. Okay, so uh, the, the prop and the boat itself and my prop in particular is occupying a significant part of the uh, UV coordinate space. So I just want to sort of correct this stretch that's going on on my boat here a little bit. So I'm just going to go in here and select all the UVs I consider to be nice, which would be the main portion of the center of the boat. So F12 to go into UV mode and select this section of the boat here. And then I'm going to do an unfold operation. So unfold. In case it didn't really work out. So polygons, unfold options, pin selected UVs. This time I'm going to go for an unfold constraint in the vertical and hit apply. And hopefully that'll stretch out the boat a little bit better. Yeah, so that's a bit nicer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start positioning these UVs as well alongside the boat and then bring this down. I could rotate this section here, so if I grow the selection by going select shell, I can rotate it with these uh, values here, these ones here, so it takes up less space. I grab this last piece up here and move it into position. And what I'll do now is grab my propeller and I'm going to scale this down to match the rest of my UV space uh, density. And I bring this down and put this into position here. Alright, so now I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to scale it to go inside my square. So what has to happen now is I need to stick all of this uh, inside of here. There's a couple ways. I can actually just go into object mode and go polygon and use my layout to stick it all in there for me as well. But you can see how it's pulled apart all my prop here, which I didn't want it to do. So I'm just going to do this task manually instead so I can maintain uh, uh, my objective of keeping those uh, props in the same UV space, those blades. So I'm just going to scale it down manually and I'm going to position it like so. And I'm not going to worry about, about saving texture space so much. Um, but this other area could be used for other parts of the boat which would have included in the model. Uh, but this should be okay. So I'm going to press F8 on the keyboard. And that's pretty much the UVs done. So I'm going to file and save this as something else. Sub uh, UV. And I'm going to go polygons. I'm going to go UV snapshot. I'm going to output this to uh, images out UV. And I'm going to put sub in there. So I know it's for the submarine. And click OK. I'm going to flick to Photoshop. And I'm going to open that uh, new image I just created under images, uh, out UV sub. There it is. So what do we do here once we get into Photoshop? So IFF is nice because it comes in with a transparency. I'm going to, however, make my... Uh, go away. Image adjustments levels. I'm going to attempt to make the lines darker and easier to see and that should be a lot better and uh, now I'm going to call this UV layer and I'm going to lock it so I can't paint on it and I'm going to create a new layer and put it underneath it which I will flood a white color and I'll just give this name uh, BG or background uh, and I'm going to lock that too and what I'm going to do now is basically paint on the layer in between so essentially I have my sub as such, so now I can go ahead and start painting my texture. So if I just grab a color, I'll say grey, or let's make it a red sub, or green sub. So I just flood it green, and start growing my selection out. Oops. Uh, and just start painting, more or less. In front of the boat. I'll paint everything but my prop shaft. So I'm going to go back to painting in pen mode this time. Ok. 
Okay. Uh, prop as such, and then I'll just do some a uh, lighter color, maybe a blue, and do some kind of tiger pattern on it or something. Yeah, whatever. It's an awesome sub. Okay. So I'm totally in disguise now. And navigator. I'm gonna make my um, prop shaft section. Let's do a selection here. I'll make that a nice silver. Like so and just flood. Flood. Okay. And flood down there too. Okay, good. And deselect. And okay, so here I can just sort of go ahead and do all kinds of things. I could stick some text on it, um, uh, make that yellow text. And I'm on a boat, and I can transform that to oops. it again. I'm, I'm on a boat. Okay, now I have to transform this time. There we go. And I can put that text on the side of the boat. And I could drop a shadow on it. Okay, or I could uh, blend it with the underneath layer as well. You got all the basic effects you have in um, Photoshop. You can do anything you want with this. Let's just pop back into text mode here, and I'm going to change it completely to something else. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, turn off my UV layer. I'm going to file save this out as uh, just chuck it out as a BMP into my source images directory. And I'm going to call this not cube diffuse. I'm going to call this uh, submarine or sub diffuse one. Okay, so I'll flick back to Maya, and I'm going to right-click my uh, model, go assign new material. I'm going to go for a Lambert. Okay, I no longer need my UV texture editor open, so I'll close it. I will go and look through my history here by clicking on the right arrow. Okay, to a file my Lambert material, which I will immediately need rename to the sub uh, material, so I know what it is all the time. And I'll go into the color channel here and hit the input box here and load up a file. And then I will look for my new awesome sub texture, like so. And there you go. Of course, I want to apply it to the rest here. So I'll select this, sign existing material, sub material, and that actually needs to be normals and then set normal an angle on it. should do. Yeah, it's much better. So now you can sort of go sick on your uh, textures. So one of the things you have to notice with the UV seams is that areas that won't match, you have to be careful of is like where your seams are. Uh, the underneath of the boat, the seams aren't going to match either. So this is kind of some of the unique problems you have uh, with painting textures. And but overall, you know, no one's going to be looking at the bottom of the boat. They're going to be looking at the top of the boat. So I think this is going to be kind of nice. All right. So this is the basic idea for UVW unwrapping. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope you have a go at it. Okay. Thanks very much.